bikes today. Mine, a 570-1991 Bullet. Then we have Paul on the 650 Interceptor. And Jonathan on what I believe is a 350 Classic. So, without further ado, let's make a move. Yep, nice and sunny as we round that good old favourite. Oh shit, corner. Nothing coming. So away we go. Here comes the first one of the day. Don't bother looking, just pull out. No worry, missus, I'll just go round you. No, I'm done. Maybe you'll get me next time. Ah! I want you to go down there. Roll down the hill through Quadford. Here we are at the calf. Time for brekkie and wait for the other two. Nice triumph in a BSA A10 roll up just as we leave it. Along what used to be the old A5 for a while at Atcham Bridge over the River Seven, and then we make a left down the side of Attingham Park. Ellesmere and we park in the dedicated motorcycle parking bays. And one of the things I was testing on this run is the helmet camera. It is my pick it up and have a look. My Drift Ghost XL which is running 1080 or 30 frames per second. My new camera which is the Ghost XL Pro also running 1080 but at 50 frames per second. So far it's refused to work. <laughs> it is most odd because the other two drift cameras I've got have always been reliable and dependable. But I'll keep persevering. No doubt sometime during the day I'll get it up and running. Well, and we park up and walk around for a bit. Paul was particularly interested in one of the cycle shops so we spent 20 minutes in there discussing things that pedophiles talk about. Mainly the converting of push bikes to electric push bikes. All things for the future. Right, I think I may have got the other camera working. So we'll take the old road up to the Ponderosa and have a cuppa. This is the old road up to the Ponderosa Calf. This was the route you had to take before the Horseshoe Pass, as we know it, was built. It's a bit steep, it's a bit narrow, but it's very enjoyable. Yeah, the last few hundred yards are very steep indeed. Now, all being well, rear facing camera should be working now so let's have a look now the image stabilization should be far better on this camera and by the look of it it's certainly a clearer image nothing's bouncing about everything's as it should be So we'll just carry on our way up to the Ponderosa Calf.
I'll leave it running for a bit because the scenery is worth looking at, if nothing else. And here we are, the Ponderosa. We'll park up and have a cuppa and plan on what to do next. We we'll come back down using the actual horseshoe pass itself, which will eventually drop us down again into Langwachen. And I think then it'll be some of the back roads and see where we end up. So we turn off the A5 and on to what seems an uphill climb that goes on for quite a few miles. I think we should have turned right back there. So let's turn round and have another go. it. I think we're back on the right road again now. And it still climbs. We're still going uphill. I guess that'll be a decent view when we get to the top. We pull in and have a chat with some of the locals. Here we are, a few of the local lassies, all sporting very nice yellow earrings. I don't know what mischief they've been up to, but they're all wearing ankle monitors. Probably on some kind of curfew. Oh well, we'll leave them in peace and carry on. Later ladies. Yeah. Time to consult the flat nav. Yeah. At least then we may have an idea of where we're going. But does it matter? It's nice scenery. It's decent weather. We'll end up back on one way or the other. So, let's get on with it. Whoops. Paul's gone the wrong way. That's alright, we'll wait for him to turn around. It's a nice day, we can sit in the sunshine and watch the world go past. Ah, our leader returns. And just as there happens to be a car coming down the lane. Oh, I'm sure he'll get past. Yeah, plenty of room. Right, ever onward. We stop to take in the view and take a few photographs. In fact that's the three photographs at the beginning of this video. They were taken here. Right, enough of the tourist stuff. Let's carry on. Petrol, always a good idea. Managed to get just over 10 litres in there. 
which is about two and a quarter gallon in real money. So that ain't too bad. Having fed the bikes, time to feed ourselves. It appears there's a Greg's at this here Asda. I opted for a cup of coffee and a pasty. Pasty was a weird creation, it was pleasant, but there were no actual lumps of meat or anything else in there. You literally sucked the middle out of the pasty and then at the pastry. A pasty for people with no teeth is the way I'd describe it. Coming back we use the A5. Not the most exciting of roads. But it's quick, it's straight and it gets you there. On the downside, I think the vibration is going to be quickly on the A5. I'd have a with a lock on my right hand toolbox. Down into Much Wenlock. And this is where we part company with Paul and Jonathan carrying on towards Bridge North and Kidderminster whilst I head down towards Bilderwas Iron Bridge and the Rabbit Run back home. There on the right for those that have not seen it before, the very first iron bridge in the world, built in 1779 and open for traffic in 1781 and you can still cross over it today on foot rather than by bike. But there you go. Iron Bridge and the reason why they call it Iron Bridge. Coming up on the left is what's left of the Bedlam Furnaces, one of the first coke fired blast furnaces to be built in this country, which more or less kick started the Industrial Revolution. And as we approach Oshit Corner, there's an awesome cart. We go past as quietly as possible. Any road, soon be on, get the kettle on. So ends another day out. When I put the bike in the garage I noticed the right hand toolbox had fallen open. Lock had failed. But as luck had it, most of the stuff that was in there had jammed in fairly tight so it hadn't fallen out. That's a bit of luck. I ordered a new lock. That got fitted on Friday, so all's well in the world again.